Let's address some of the points in that last track. It's an F minor blues, so naturally you're going to hear a mixture of all the sounds in the uncaged system that we've been talking about. I began by playing this line, which is coming off of the minor 7 flat 5 or minor 6 chord. In this case, it's more like a minor 6 chord because it's in F minor. So, but it's a walk-up line that I use for both, and you could actually use it for a dominant chord as well. But I just want to play it again. Like, kind of like playing in the melodic minor, slightly different pattern. Uh, then, the other shapes that I like to use are down in this position. And when you come up from this chord and turn it into, to go to the four chord, this is a good figure to use targets that note. Back to F minor. See, I'm targeting certain chord tones. Uh, another very important uh, point I want to bring up to you that I was purposely trying to do a few variations of was the idea that over this chord, G minor 7 flat 5 and C7 altered, you can use an imitative figure that goes up a minor third. So I think I played it first this way. And that has a nice imitation sound, so it sounds like. And then you'd resolve to your normal F minor after that. So, fits that chord. And then you'd have another connection. Or something along those lines. Pick any of the sounds from our uncaged uh, plethora of uh, licks and use them in that setting because you can resolve to almost any of them as you'll discover. Uh, another idea that I like to use a lot is the one of having a voice leading figure where it sounds like the chords are doing, uh, let's say, uh, uh, and that means this chromatic note inside of the F minor. So the way that it's played a lot of times to get that effect is and I'm ending on the F minor 6 chord. So and there's a lot of ways that you can phrase that rhythmically. Coming back to our home base F minor position. Another one to use would be taking a similar idea and playing it in our altered position, F minor. And in that track, what I did is I took fragmentation as a way to mess with your improvisation, which sounds like a rhyme, doesn't it? But anyway, it's the idea of going... And then taking... Using parts of it. That's again using the idea of those whole tone chords but playing with them rhythmically because you have enough time in the blues to be able to do that with three bars of F minor going on at the same time. Uh, another sound that you can use that's similar to our is to do it in the lower octave and has a similar effect of going up in minor thirds but what does is it changes the octaves and the displacement of the melody so instead of going Another variation of that movement in minor thirds over the chord is used by playing it this way. And here you can use this pattern instead. Notice it's the same interval jumps, but the relationships are different. I'm going to the F note there. Here I went to the D flat note. But here I'm going, but it has a nice feeling of imitation in the same sense. So you look for elements like that when you improvise, they're thematic elements that you take and manipulate and you can change the rhythms too and you can use them in imitative patterns. So that's what's happening here. You're moving them in minor thirds to get that effect. The chord is moving in a fourth progression but your pattern is moving in a minor third progression. So it really messes with the harmony in a unique way. Uh, takes the melody to a kind of a more independent uh, sound over the harmony. It makes it stand out differently. So that was the F minor blues track. 
Try some of your own ideas. Take any of the uncaged positions we've talked about, moving them around linearly, and just combine it with that F7 preceding the B flat minor, and then also using that movable minor third thing uh, against G minor 7 to C7. I think you'll be very happy with the results you try.